Have you ever wondered how dangerous it can be when a massive pillar collapses in an underground mine? Take a look at this amazing footage. That's an actual film of an air blast that took place in August 2021 after a massive pillar collapse at an underground limestone mine in Tennessee. We're going to find out what happened next, right now. There have actually been four pillar collapses in the last 18 months at different mines in the U.S. This has led MSHA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, to launch a new pillar collapse initiative. Chris Mark is highly involved with the initiative. He's the principal roof control specialist for MSHA. Chris has been doing ground control for underground mining for over 40 years, going back to the Bureau of Mines, then at NIOSH, and now at MSHA for the last 10 years or so. The, uh, the miners had actually gone underground that, that morning, and in an old abandoned area of the mine, they heard a lot of noises, like there were roof falls and rock coming off of pillars and so on. In fact, they were mining very nearby where the collapse took place. But the collapse itself was of pillars that had been mined probably 20 years before. And so they left the mine and they were out, had been outside for about 20 minutes when the ground shook a little bit. And then there was this enormous blast of air that came out of the portals. The air blast actually lasted for more than 20 seconds with wind speed estimates ranging from 120 to 180 miles per hour. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The three other recent pillar collapses since 2020 took place at limestone mines in Pennsylvania. And about five years ago, there had been a collapse at another Pennsylvania operation. And in that case, there were three miners that were actually standing in front of the portal. And the air blast came out just as it did in that Tennessee case. But in this case, the, the, the guys were a lot less lucky. And two of them ended up being life flighted unconscious to the hospital. At this point, I asked Chris a fairly obvious question. Why are these pillars that were mined as long as 20 years ago collapsing now? And should we be doing anything differently to prevent future pillar collapses? You know, we know a lot more about pillar design now than we did back then. And so even though, you know, their pillar design now is a lot more robust, it's, it was the design in this legacy area. It was even, a, you know, a different operator. Maybe it was a couple operators ago. But what they had done there is, you know, and, it, and this is very common in, in limestone mining, they had mined initially about 25 feet high but then they had mined about 20 feet of the floor out. And so you end up with a much higher pillar. And in this case, the, the pillars were, you know, 40 feet or so wide. At best, some were quite a bit smaller. And so the result is you have these very slender pillars that had been mined a long time ago, exactly what triggered them to come to, to collapse so many years later, we don't we don't really know. In this particular case, NIOSH actually studied these pillars back about 15 years ago. And so we have lots of photographs of what they of what they looked like at that time. And in some respects, the big mystery is how they stayed up as long as they did. But the lesson is that there are lots of limestone mines that have these legacy areas. And so it's not enough that we that we design our pillars properly going forward, we need to think about what, what it could be the impact of a collapse of some of these legacy pillars. Of course, pillar collapses don't only occur in limestone mines. Oh, not at all. Historically, there have been uh, many incidents of pillar failure in all kinds of different mining. Probably the most uh, the, 
the biggest pillar failure in in recent years. Well, there's actually been a couple. You could say Cranal Canyon in, um, in 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 coal mining, but there was a Trona mining collapse. Uh, two of them actually about 20 years ago. One of them was so large that there was a magnitude 5.4 earthquake that was uh, generated by the uh, by the collapse. In the early 90s, late 80s and early 90s, there were a series of of, of collapse in collapses in uh, central Appalachia, mainly in areas that had been worked out, but where the coal mining left remnant pillars, lots of lots of remnant pillars. So they looked stable, but then at some point, pretty soon after mining, you had collapses in about 10 cases. And we looked at these and we concluded that in every instance, you had pillars that were too, ma too small to carry the load. In other words, their safety factor was too low, but they were also very slender, which in the coal mining context, meant a width to height ratio of about three or less. And so since the mid nineties, we've been doing a lot better with pillar design and we've been avoiding these kinds of configurations in coal mining and we haven't had another collapse since. So it goes to show that you can, you can pretty well eliminate, I think, collapses with proper pillar design. But again, you, you know, you have this, you have this legacy pillar problem in, in limestone mines. You know, the first line of defense is to be able to evaluate the uh, pillars themselves and see what the likelihood of their failure might be. Our primary tool is a uh, uh, method that was developed by NIOSH called S-Pillar. S-Pillar is based on a lot of studies of limestone pillars. And so it's a way to estimate their strength as determined by the geology and by their, their dimensions, how tall they are and how wide they are. But then they're all, you know, the other half of it is then to, a way to look at uh, the consequences of a collapse. And if there was an air blast, say where that air blast might go. And then the last step is what kind of mitigation could an operator take? You need to take a look at, at these legacy areas in your mind and see, do you have areas that might be at risk? And if you do, what might happen if they were to collapse? And if that's going to put miners at risk or people on the surface, actually. I haven't talked about the big sinkholes that we've seen on the surface that have come from these kinds of collapses. But if those are going to put people at risk, then you know, there, there are maybe some things that you need to, there are, there are things that you can do to try to limit what that risk might be. To learn more about the MSHA Pillar Collapse Initiative, just go to msha.gov forward slash pillar initiative. You'll find an extended video there along with several presentations, technical papers, and a link to the S-Pillar software from NIOSH for stone mine pillar design. And if you'd like to contact Chris Mark to learn more about legacy area pillars and what to do about them, you can reach him at the email shown here. It's mark.christopher at dol.gov. Up next, it's time to take a look at Core Safety's module number three, Management Systems Coordination. It's all about how to develop, implement, and manage the Core Safety system. In Management System Coordination, at least one senior manager shall be assigned with formal responsibility for the development, implementation, operation, and maintenance of the Core Safety system. A company or operation-specific policy shall be developed detailing the commitment to and implementation of core safety. This policy should serve as a descriptive outline of how the 20 modules will be incorporated into the safety health management system. The policy must be communicated to all employees, contractors, and other stakeholders. A comprehensive plan that identifies the processes and responsibilities for developing, implementing, and verifying the core safety system will be developed and will include a schedule for full implementation. The safety and health policy expectations should be consistent and adhered to by all departments within the organization. All parts of the safety health management system shall be properly documented to assist responsible persons with the development, implementation, and monitoring of the program. 
Finally, the development and maintenance costs and resource hours required shall be budgeted and tracked, as should any material expenditures needed to be included for fulfilling the safety health management system. To learn more about module number three, just visit our website at coresafety.org. And next month, we'll see a summary of module number four, fatality prevention and risk management. So that's all for now. Please remember that anytime you're online, be sure to follow our posts on Facebook and Twitter. For Core Safety and the National Mining Association, I'm Nelson Duffel. I'll see you back here again next month with a new safety story. Until then, please be safe out there and thanks for watching. Special thanks to Chris Mark for this month's interview on the MSHA Pillar Collapse Initiative. To share one of your safety stories, videos, or photos, email us at info at coresafetytv.org.